God has very different meanings to different people. There's an elevation above which all plane crashes have ended in 100% dead. God, to you, is an ever-receding pocket of scientific people. Of civilization, anytime people had gods, gods that they revered, they're in high places. The heavens have been associated right. with deity, correct, from the beginning, right? Okay, and so my field, astrophysics, directly confronts many people's questions mm -hmm. regarding our existence, right? For that reason, mommy, where's heaven? Oh, it's up there. No, it's not, because I have a telescope. <laughs> Stop. It's not up there, Mommy. <laughs> right. So you have that that intersection right. of people's curiosity and what actually happens in modern astrophysics. Okay. And if you are religious or or prone to be religious, right. it's Which easy. Which I think everyone is. But perhaps, yeah, we're I human. We're prone to It's be. a human it thing. It's a human thing. There's an urge, I think, to see that which is unknown mm -hmm. in the universe. You hear of it. Big unknowns like dark matter and dark energy. Mm. Two hugely mysterious pieces of modern astrophysics that are unresolved. Right. And they're not little, they're big. Okay. You add them together, mm -hmm. it's 95, 96% of what is driving this universe, and we have no clue what it is. That's insane. No yeah. clue. Anyhow, so we don't we can measure them. It's not a mystery. That it's there. That it's there. All right. right. We can measure their existence. We don't know what it is. What it is. All right. And there's precedent for that. We knew about the spectra of stars as soon as we were able to bring a spectroscope to the telescope. Oh, so this interesting information here, we don't understand it, right. but we know it must be important. It's different for this star than that uh -huh. star. Oh, well, these two stars match. Let's make a catalog of all the spectra. Later, we would learn quantum physics, and we could then interpret what was going on and thus was the birth of our modern understanding of stellar evolution. The first steps are the measurements. Right. So it's not so weird that we have measurements and don't know what it is. Right. So there's not only that, there are other questions that are just simply yet to be answered, okay. as opposed to mysteries. So one of them is what was around before the Big Bang? That's a big it one. might've been a multiverse, but if even if there is a multiverse, what was yeah, around before the multiverse. multiverse? Okay. And we don't yet know how Earth went from organic molecules to self-replicating life. Right. All right, Earth figured it out. We haven't figured that out yet. Right. Granted, Earth took a couple hundred million years, all right? Yeah. And we're trying to do it in the lab overnight. Right. But still, that's a mystery. And who knows how many failures over that couple hundred million years Earth had. Good point. You know? Because they, they, they ain't left. Well, they're right. not there. They, right. They're not there, they didn't survive. So, if you lean religious, you will see these mysteries as where God might reside. Yes. God is operating there. Right. And there's a long tradition of this, actually, but philosophers got wise to it, and they came up with a term for it. We've mentioned it on a couple of other Absolutely. of our explainers. God of the gaps. God of the gaps. The God of the gaps. It's a very powerful concept. And it's got the alliteration, so it yes. kind of I, stuck I with like people. It. So it's the urge to declare that if there's something you don't understand about the universe, that God must be there with the with the, with the the puppet strings or right. with the forcing of what's going on. Right. And my favorite God of the Gaps moment, can I it tell you is. that? It was Ptolemy. Okay. Claudius Ptolemy, AD 150, in the in the margin of his greatest work, the Almagest. Right. Okay. He masterfully codified the epicycles that he was sure planets traced in the sky really? with Earth in the middle of the known universe. Oh. There's no other way to account for planets going, going backwards, backwards and, and forwards. forwards. With retrograde, we have right. words for it even. Right. goes backwards retrograde. Right. They we think the planet's actually doing that. So he does this, right. but it's still kind of a mystery. Why would all that happen? Exactly. It's just doing it. I can account for it with my little epicycles. So this is, it's it's been going on forever. Right. This, this urge. Yeah. Okay. My caution there is if that's how you define God, where science has yet to tread, right, then God to you is an ever receding pocket of scientific ignorance. Oh, that's sad. That's, I mean, that's if you that's, define if God you define that God, way, God, it's though. an if statement. There are people who they're not falling for the God of the gaps. Right. To them, God is everything. Yeah. Gaps and no gaps. Right. Okay. So that God, that's a different God. 
Okay. okay. That's not just a God who's lurks. Right. Where science, because science is an ever moving frontier, right. right? One day we'll figure out dark matter, dark energy, and and what happens to your God if that's what it was. All right. right. Okay. okay. So the people who say God is everything, that resembles greatly Spinoza's God. He suggested yeah. that the very order of the universe, the operations of nature, everything we see, feel, and experience is God. Okay. And, and, and now I know a lot of people who feel that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So that would be Spinoza's God. And when Einstein was asked, does he believe in God? He said, if there's a God I believe in at all, it's, I'm paraphrasing, it's Spinoza's God. Okay. Right. That's a different God from a God that is paying attention to your behavior. So as you come from that posture to gods that are more engaged with you and your existence. Personally involved. Personally involved. That the, these would be gods you pray to. Okay. You wouldn't pray to Spinoza's God. I just want to make it clear to people that when they say God, right. God has very different meanings to different people. There's a tiered even throughout history of God. Even throughout history. Wow, Correct. that's great. Correct. Okay, I like it okay. so far. This is great. So a common God manifesting today in people's beliefs is a God that cares about them right. and their health, wealth, and well-being, right. and their prayers, uh, and, and the like. Okay. Right. So there is a point of view that says, this universe is so amazing. There had to be a God. An intelligence behind it. The intelligent design people. So in that case, they're not looking at a rock and saying there's intelligence behind it. Right. They're looking at something more complicated than they can understand. Right. And saying, there's the intelligence. Right. All right. They look at the operations of a cell. Yes. All that going on in something that's microscopic. Exactly. They're just amazed by it. They're in awe, in awe. awe of it. <clears throat> and so surely God is at work right. around here. Yeah. Now, so one of them that went around for a while, and I, I found it very unconvincing. It was the laws of physics are exactly the way they need to be for us to be alive. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. If they were slightly different, then we wouldn't be here. Like if the charge on the electron or the value of the gravitational constant or the speed of light, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And they all configure to make matter and energy come together such that we can be alive in that universe. Right. Okay. I mean, there's some people that even on a macro level, they're like, we live in the Goldilocks zone of these planets. Mm -hmm. And the other planets are dead as far as we're concerned. As far as we know. That's as right. far so, as we know. So with all of these parameters in just the right way, in just the right place, people who are uh, lean religious refer to it as the fine-tuning argument. Interesting. Okay. Everything's fine-tuned right. to produce life. Right. Human life. Right. Not, so my, He's a god of precision that, have, that has placed things in this perfect configuration kind of synchronicity yes that okay all the gears mesh and everything works so that we get light and we pop out and we pop out exactly right. i don't argue the fact that we have constants of nature mm -hmm. that if they were slightly different we wouldn't be here i, I, I don't have course, an argument right. against that. i mean that's but yeah. my argument however is if whoever created the universe if there's such an entity that did why make a universe where we didn't show up for 13 point point billion, seven, years. Bill, billion years. Right. Not only that, Earth was not born until the universe was already eight, nine billion years old. Right. And then life begins, single-celled organisms. Is this the god of that life? Okay. But that that was 3.8 billion years ago. Humans in our current form last, you know, 100,000 years or so, go to a million, million years, which is a drop in the bucket relative to the, to the four for, billion. For the four billion, billion. Yeah, right. Millions to billions? Right, that's... Okay, it seems like if you really wanted to make a universe that favored us, we would have shown up much, much earlier. <laughs> much earlier, I'm just thinking. Right. Just if you want wanted... the, the argument against that would be that there is no, because God exists outside of time and space, mm -hmm. that, what we see is 13.8 billion years is n is not measured by God. Yeah, however, my issue there is not how long that is, but how long that is relative to us. I got That's you. all. I got that you. could be short to God, right? but 
that means we're even shorter. Okay. <laughs> so, so it doesn't, it does not I look, what you're saying. it does not right. look like the universe cared much about us for most of its existence. Right. That's, that's my only point. There. I got you. Okay. So the multiverse, each universe would have slightly different laws of physics. Quantum physics tells us this. Right. Okay. And would you exist in a universe where life could not exist? No. no I'm going to okay. go with no. Okay. Yeah. So we are alive in a universe among the infinitude created in a multiverse. We're alive in a universe for which life can happen as we have come to know it, life as we know it. Right. So we should not be surprised that we're having this conversation in that universe and not any of the other infinity universes. And this multiverse wasn't invented in response to a religious argument. It comes out of the math. Comes out of quantum when, physics. When you, what comes out of quantum physics, you're trying to shotgun marry it to, to general relativity in the early universe and you see what comes out of it and a multiverse comes out of it. What makes that less appealing, if you're gonna do a, put God in the equation, mm -hmm. is generally those gods have certain uh, powers ascribed to them. Well, they have to. Okay. Yeah. All right, they're uh, all powerful, right. all knowing, right. all good. Right. All right, these are common terms invoked. All I can say is that when I look at the universe, an asteroid strikes rendering, you know, you know, 66 million years ago, 75% of the species of life on Earth went extinct. The universe doesn't look like anyone is in charge of anything. The randomness of the universe. The randomness of the universe. A hundred years ago, so random. A hundred years ago, before our telescopes were good enough right. to reveal asteroid strikes and stellar collisions and galactic collisions and all this, it was, oh, the beauty and the majesty of this ordered universe. Right. I have books that talk about the ordered universe. And then you look closer and it, it does not look like what people wanted it to be to match their expectations of the God they're ascribing the, the, its handiwork to be. On Earth, if I drop you butt naked in a random spot on Earth. You're probably gonna die. You're gonna die within a half hour. Yeah. You drop you in the ocean. You're gonna die. Two, two thirds of Earth, three quarters is, is ocean. Right. Shark is gonna drop take you. a bite out of you. Bye. You dead, yeah. okay? Right. If I drop you in in the Arctic, there's not even land there. Right. You're just, you're just hors d'oeuvres for, for polar bears. Polar bears. Yep. So we say, well, Earth is a haven for life. After you built cities and heat and air conditioning and clothing. And this, they would say, oh, look how beautiful Earth is. Right. So we did a lot of work to make Earth comfortable for us. Right. And so I remain agnostic on this. I'm happy to listen to and look at information, evidence, data that might support an almighty, all-powerful being. Right. But the, the distinction is, if you want to say there's a being responsible for the universe, is that the same being who tells you how to pray, who to pray to, what day to pray on, what food to eat, what food to not eat, and who to sleep with. And why why can't it get it right? The fact that there is no uniformity in it is is kind of a problem. Well, it's not a problem for the people who are certain that their God is the one true God. Well, that's the, right? pro the problem. That is the problem. Right, because everybody that their is, God is sure the that their one. God is the one. Right. Not everybody, but many people, people who are deeply religious in their tradition right. are. Okay. Listen, I used to be one of them. I'm not, I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, I have a great deal of compassion for people who are devout and because Oh, so do I. Yeah. I got no, yeah. I, I know you do. I, I, we've we've never had this been, conversation. It's offline, never been a thing. So, I just want to yeah. openly have people a conversation. Think, first of all, let me just say that people don't think that you have compassion for those who believe. They think that you're hostile to it. And what they don't know is that nothing could be further from the truth. And I've asked you point blank. Is it possible that you could ever believe in God? And your answer was yes. And then you gave me the criteria for yeah, doing so. Right. There's an elevation above which all plane crashes have ended in 100% dead people. Right. Okay. The distance that the plane falls out of the sky. Okay. There's a, an elevation above which no one has ever survived. Okay. Imagine a plane where it crashes above that level and only the Christians survive and everybody else is dead. That, that things that make you go, hmm, hmm. only the Muslims survive. Right. Only the, you know, the Zoroastrians survive. Exactly. So I could easily come up with a, a set of, that you want to test it several times. Once would not be sufficient. No. As right. in any scientific experiment. But I can come up with, it's not hard to do that. Yeah. And so I, so all, my only point is an emergent sense of spirituality in people because religions have been losing their adherence, their 
Yeah, people are not following religion as much. But they'll still say that they're spiritual. Right. And these are people who are feel that there's some force out there. Something greater than themselves. Greater than, greater than themselves. And, but it doesn't come with all the, all of the rules and regulations and, and baggage, if, dare I call it that, right. that comes with so many religions. Right. So I, I'm, I'm simply saying that the universe, if you want to say there's a God involved, ask yourself, is it because there's something you don't yet know how to explain? Right. Every example of that throughout history where science has given attention to that phenomenon, mm -hmm. it has yielded to scientific discovery. Th um, that's one thing, well, it, it, including it, it, the spread of disease, right, everything. Germs. You cannot argue with that statement. I'm just that, I mean, right, right. And, and so today, if there's something that amazes you or is mysterious to you, I just take my cue from the history of this exercise and say, I'm going to stick with the science, right? Because I, I'm not compelled to throw my hands up and say. This is God. God must be in charge. Right. Be it Spinoza's God, right. or 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 Pocahontas's God, right. or anybody's God. At home, I I own multiple shelves uh -oh. this wide of religious books, oh, books, of, of publications. Yeah. Everything that Jehovah's Witnesses ever left oh, at my I, door. I have, I have uh, there's a shelf of that. Right. I have. Uh, there's the Quran multiple times. I have a Quran. Uh, and I have I have the, and the Bible. The, I have the Torah. I, I had, don't have the Torah. Yeah, you don't have the Torah. Yeah, no, okay. It's mostly the it's Old mostly Testament. It's mostly in the Old, Old Testament. Okay, exactly. The Levitical so, so, law. So, so I, it's there, and I have large uh, King James Bibles that go from the, the 18th century. I have several Bibles. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think about this often, yeah. and I think about what passages have affected people and civilization and the like. In most conversations I get into with religious people, fact remains. I own more religious books than they than they own science books. And so I mean, so I'm not coming from nowhere. I think about it and I care about it.